specifically in the various upheavals that we are seemingly encouraging. Do we have a preference as to which groups come to power? Or are we agnostic so long as the mechanisms are electoral? If so, how do we avoid the risk of fostering a new absolutism legitimized by managed plebiscites? What outcomes are compatible with America's core strategic interests? Will it be possible to combine strategic withdrawals from key countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and reduced military expenditures with doctrines of universal humanitarian intervention. In my view, the Arab Spring has not abolished traditional strategic realities. All traditional factional forces within the societies experiencing our people. We owe it to ourselves to define a plausible vision of success at the outset of the process, lest we risk a disillusionment that submerges the goals we are affirming. This counsels a willingness to relate our efforts to a pace somewhat more evolutionary, sometimes even ambiguous, than may satisfy the YouTube and Twitter generation. It is not an abdication of principle to adapt American foreign policy to the domestic circumstances of other societies and other factors, including national security. It is the precondition of it. In the end, what is at issue are concepts of world order and human progress. The extreme realist model proposes a world of equilibrium in which the United States cannot shape history because history cannot be shaped, only enacted. The opposite model substitutes a democratic teleology of history and assigns to America the responsibility and the ability to urge it along through diplomacy, the encouragement of revolution, and in the extreme through force. American Burkean conservatism can make its distinctive contribution in transcending this cleavage a world order of states embracing participatory governance and international cooperation in accordance with agreed upon rules can be our aspiration. Progress towards it is desirable, even possible, but this progress will generally need to be sustained through a series of intermediary stages. At any given interval, we will usually be better served, as Burke wrote in the passage quoted earlier, to acquiesce in some qualified plan that has not come up to the full perfection of the abstract idea than to push for the more perfect and risk a collapse of abdication. 
we need a strategy and diplomacy that allows for the complexity of the journey, the loftiness of the goal, as well as a recognition of the incompleteness of the human endeavors through which it may be approached at any stage. An attempt to operate on the principles of power alone will prove unsustainable. But an attempt to promote values without an account for culture and nuance will end in disillusionment and abdication. Idealists do not have a monopoly on moral value. Realists must recognize that ideals are also part of reality. At any time, strategy must merge the two and be prepared to work by gradual processes towards ultimate goals. Such an effort must be based on the awareness of our cultural her heritage and how our experience must lead to charting a broad path to our future. As Burke wrote, people will not look forward to posterity who never look backward to their ancestors. Preserving our cultural heritage is a vast challenge in our social media and internet age. The generations brought up on books were obliged to internalize concepts and think through complex ideas transmitted across time. When information is acquired by being looked up on the internet and identity is defined by hundreds of friends on the Facebook, a surfeit, a surfeit of information may inhib inhibit the acquisition of knowledge. <clears throat> and when identity is established, visually respect for the human personality. When facts are disaggregated from their con context, and called up only when needed, they risk losing co the coherence of tradition. Overcoming this danger may be the ultimate task of the Burkean conservative. In this spirit, I would like to thank the editorial board for this honor in the name of a great statesman and early supporter of the cause of America. And I would like to congratulate the new criterion on its proud record of performing a crucial service for the Western and American cultural inheritance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I think Henry has agreed to take a few questions. Uh, we, have, we have a microphone, and uh, Alexandra Priet is the hebe of the microphone. She is going to uh, bear it to you. So uh, we only have time for a few, but if you raise your hand, wait for the microphone, 
say who you are, uh, your question will be answered. Or, or perhaps Henry has settled all questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I would prefer that the audience have their own. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y